Hello friends, my name is Chanda Craft and I'm here with you today with Crafted Watercolor. Today I wanted to share with you one of my favorite artists and um, then we can do a painting that's inspired by his work. This is Winslow Homer's artwork. He was an American artist who lived in the New England area in the mid 1800s to early 1900s and he was known for painting images of everyday American life and a lot of fishing scenes and, um, and boat scenes. And so here is one of a sailboat. I picked out a few with sailboats. That's the theme for today. I really like the soft colors and all the those pretty blues that are in these paintings. There's fluffy clouds in the background. So that is our project for today, is to do a Winslow Homer inspired sailboat painting. I'm gonna start by drawing my sailboat. And I'm gonna have it located right about here. The first thing I'm gonna do is have a straight line that comes down. And then I'm gonna draw boat attached to that. So I'm going to have this be the top of my boat about there and have this sail. It's going to be like a triangle. Like that. Right here and kind of a curved line to that spot there. I'm going to have this other sail filled with more wind. So I'm going to have it curving out a little bit more. So I'm going to do the inside line first. Like so. And then I'm going to have the front of the sail attached up here. And another curved line underneath. Like so. In front of my boat, it's just a little line. And then on the back, I need a rudder. So I have this little line here and another curved line. And then my rudder is going to come out underneath here, like so, with a little handle. I'm sure that has a technical name. <laughs> I am going to put a flag on the top of my sailboat. And maybe some stripes. Or you could do whatever design you like on your flag or on your <laughs> sail. I'm just going to put some curved lines on here for stripes that I can paint later. Now it looks like it's just floating in space, right? So I need a horizon line, which I'm gonna put right about here. I'm just gonna draw a fairly straight line all the way across my paper. And I think I'm gonna have some waves so my boat has somewhere to sit. So I'm gonna draw a line starting here and come around and have it just curve off the page over here. Like so. Maybe I have another wave in between this one and the horizon. So I'm just going to draw one more wave over here. It curves off over there. 
and probably one more in the front here. Like so. I think I'm going to put an island back here. And it's pretty far away, so I don't see a lot of detail. But if you would like to add trees to your, your island, you certainly could do that. Or maybe houses of a little fishing village way out there. Maybe a couple of seagulls. Let's do one more right here. And with that, I think we're ready to paint. I have all of my supplies ready. My squirt bottle, cup of clean water, my paints, and a couple of brushes. I still have paint dried on here from the last time I painted, and I think I would like to clean that up today. I'm just going to spray that lid and take a paper towel and just wipe all, all that dry paint. If you have a lot of paint, it might take a couple of a couple of shots at it. There we go. That looks pretty good. I can get my paints wet just a little bit, not soupy, remember. And I'm ready to get started. Now, when I do a landscape like this, I like to paint the farthest things away first and then come forward. So the farthest thing away is going to be my sky. So I would like to paint that a pretty light blue Maybe it'll have some wispy clouds in it. So my first step is going to be to wet my paper. Being careful not to go on my boat. I'm going right around my boat. And just painting water where the sky is going to be. Remember, we wet the paper first when we want the paint to run smoothly. When we have a big area and we want to cover it pretty evenly, it helps to wet the paper first. Now you'll notice my paper is going to start to bend because I have quite a bit of paper of wet on here. It's going to start to bend, and that's okay. We don't. It usually flattens out as it dries. Okay. I'm going to go into my blue here. And I want the sky to be the lightest blue on my page. So I'm going to add quite a bit of water to this. I can test my paint on my paper towel to see how light it is. And then I can start putting it on my paper. I'm going to leave some of it white, so I have some wispy clouds in here. Just like we saw in the Homer paintings.
something like that. Now the next part that is closest to us in space is going to be these islands. So I'm going to go with a little green. And a little brown because they're really far away. They're not going to look very bright, Maybe even a touch of black. Let's see what color that looks like. A little more green. When things are closer to you, they look brighter in color. So that's why I added a little black and brown to that so that it doesn't look so bright. And that'll help make it look farther away. The next thing is going to be this faraway wave. And I want that to be just a little bit darker than my sky. So I'm just going to add a touch more blue to my puddle of paint there. Again, I'm going to get my paper wet. This is a smaller area, so I think I'm going to switch brushes. Get my brush wet first, and then I go and pick up my paint. Now that's a little bit darker than the sky color. Don't forget the little spot in between the flight, in between the sails that we can see. And my next wave is going to be just a little bit darker. So I'm going to add just a little more paint again to that. And I'm going to wet that next wave that's behind the boat. You'll see I turn the paper. I just do that to make it more comfortable. You can move the paper whichever way you need to. If you're a lefty, you might turn it more this way. You've even seen me turn the paper upside down sometimes. So this layer is a little bit darker yet from that wave. Being very careful around my boat because I want to leave my sails white until I'm ready to paint them.
Okay. I'm going to skip the boat and come back to that later. I'm going to keep going with these waves until I finish that part. Now I have a really big space right here to paint. I'm going to carefully take my squirt bottle and I'm going to squirt just a couple very small spots there. Just makes it easier to wet that paper quicker. If you don't have a squirt bottle, that is okay. You can just use your brush and keep dipping it in the water and going back and forth. It's just a little faster to do it with a squirt bottle. You can see that paper really wants to curl on me now that it's I have such a large area that I have gotten wet. So you guessed it, this one is going to be a little bit darker yet. I'm going to add a little more blue to my puddle and I'm going to add just a touch of black to it. All right, here we go. Oh, that doesn't quite look dark enough, does it? Use a little more paint in there. There. Now we can see a more of a difference between this wave and the one behind it. I'm a little dry over here, so I added just a little more water. And I'm using up almost all of my puddle of paint. And just one left. Mix a new puddle of paint for this. And that one is going to be my darkest one because it's closest to me. wet the area again so my paint spreads easily. I have quite a bit of blue in my brush and that's okay in this case because I'm using the same color but if I was changing color I would want to make sure I really wash my brush out before I added that water because um, it would change the color. All right let's see if this is dark enough. Maybe a little There we go. So can you see how that gives us an illusion of depth in our painting. It's like you can see in because we have changed the, what's called the value. It gets darker to lighter and that gives us that illusion of depth in our paintings. Now I'm ready to do my sailboat. 
I think I'm gonna make the boat and the rudder a dark brown. I'm gonna take some brown and put that in my lid. And some black and mix those together. Let's see what that looks like. That's very dark. Let's add a little more brown. I'm going to turn my painting upside down because this is really wet here and all of that's dry. So I can turn this upside down and not worry about smearing my hand through wet paint. I'm using just the point of my brush to get in these really small areas. background and see how that looks. And then I have to decide what I'm going to paint on my sails. Winslow Homer's pa paintings had mostly white sailboats, but when I look out on the lakes here in Minnesota in the summer, a lot of times they have a lot of colorful sails out there. I think I'm going to add a little bit of color to my sailboat too. Maybe this stripe right here. I'm going to paint that part red. And the next one, I think I'll do orange and yellow. I need to be really careful though not to touch this part together because it will run together. If I want my stripes to be nice and bright, I'm going to want to let that dry just a little bit before I paint over, paint next to it. So just be very careful not to just leave a little, a little gap there so that those two sections of paint don't quite touch. I can also just wait and let each layer dry. And then I don't have to worry about them running together. changing colors again, so I need to make sure my brush is really clean. I'm getting a little of this yellow paint. For my next stripe. And the same thing, I'm just gonna leave a very little line in between those two colors so they don't run together. If I didn't want to line there, I can just wait for it to dry. And I still have my flag. And I think I'm going to paint that flag as dark of a blue as I can. So I'm going to take just straight paint right out of there that's still a little wet. I'm going to paint my flag this really bright blue without watering it down. Okay, maybe I'll water it just a touch, just so that the paint spreads nice. There we go. What do you think? That's our Winslow Homer inspired 
sailboat painting. If you would like to learn more about Winslow Homer and read a little bit about his life, I'll provide a link in the description below this video so you can read about him and look at even more of his artwork. Thanks for joining me.